Okay, if you think, if you think you survived, stay up. If you think you've died and got extinct again, sit down, please. Okay, Tony, why do you think you survived? You've got wings, mate. They can fly above the water. Oh, we, we live in the water. Oh, we live in the water. Yeah? yeah, yeah I guess yeah. I do. Mate. I guess you do. <laughs> no key. <laughs> All right. Riff, why do you think you survived? Because um, my fins can help me move through the water. Easily. Fantastic. You're actually looking good there with your fin. More fins, more fins. Marvellous. OK, so all your mutations, again, I'm afraid have gone extinct, haven't they? You've gone extinct. What do you think is going to happen to you guys, though, with the fins? Breed. You're going to breed. Excellent. You're going to breed. And because you have that mutation in your gene, your offspring, chances are, are going to have... Babies. <laughs> they're going to be babies, yes. But they're going to have... Fins. 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 Marvellous. So let's say we do a little bit of breeding. <laughs> Marvellous, and we have lots of fin babies. Stand up, please, fin babies. All of this. Okay? All right. Let's just say this time the environment's going to change again. Okay? So you're in the water. This time we're going to have a color change. Now, if you can look at the clip charts for me, you will see underneath the clip charts three different colors. They are blue, green, and yellow. What I want you to do this time is, after three, one, two, three, I will spin again, take your colour and slap it on your forehead for me, please. One, two, three, go. What we got? Number four, OK. Let me tell you how the environment has changed. Look, we have open water for number one, ocean, sea bottom, or kelp forest. So you now live in a kelp forest. Kelp is seaweed. Big, long, green strands of seaweed. If you think you survived, stay up. If you think you've died off, sit down. I'll give you a clue, you're bright yellow, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a clue, Trisha. You're bright blue in a green kelp forest. So, Rat, why do you think you survived? Because everything is green. Everything is green. So, what's, what's the word that we use? Camouflage. And how does that help you survive? Um, um, the other ones won't eat you because they can't see you. The other ones. What do we mean by the other ones? What's the word we use? Creatures. Alison? Predators. Predators. Excellent. So, you camouflage. Also, let's say your prey, okay, um, I don't know, underwater wigglies, you eat them and they can move about. How is it going to help being green? You can pounce. Yeah, you can creep up on them because you're camouflaged, and then whoop, and down they go. Fantastic. OK, you green fin people, your genes have been passed on to the next generation. So what do you think is going to happen? You're going to produce babies, babies which are green, green. and green. OK, stand up. I'm glad you stand up like that, Remy, because, of course, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the babies are going to be green. OK, because there's always variation, isn't there? Oh, oh, oh too late. Remy and Martin were afraid. Out of the babies, we did have some which were blue. So sit back down again. You're dead straight away. <laughs> but that happens. That happens. They're not all going to be green, are they? Because there's variation in every population. OK. Next one. This time, the environment is going to change again. And this time, you are going to develop sense organs, OK, to sense your environment. And you have a choice of three sense organs. We have eyes. Yes? We have taste. And we have vibrations. <laughs> OK? So there's your three. OK, are we ready? Steady. One, two, three, go. And we have the sea beds. Right at the bottom, in the murky, dank seabed. Now think. Eyes, people. Do you think you'd be no. advantageous to have eyes right down in the bottom of the cloudy seabed? No. 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 Possibly. I don't think they're going to help, are they? So, eye people, can you sit down, please? No. Sorry. <laughs> OK. What do we have left? Zina, do you think your adaptation is going to help you down there? It's very cloudy. It's very murky. Yeah, Can't see anything. Mm. Why, do, why do you think taste is going to help you down there? Um, I don't know. Because you can't see it, you've got to 
taste it before you eat that. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's quite literally going on your tongue and, mm, mm, and tasting the floor so you can find your food. Catfish don't care what they eat. They just don't got up anything in front of them, okay? So they taste it first. So taste is a good one. Sean, yours is an interesting one. Sense vibrations. Do you think it's going to help you down at the bottom of the sea? I think it would. Yeah, I think it like, would as well. Um, like dolphins and stuff. They've got that echolocation thing. And ah, now that's that. a very advanced word. I don't think you're quite a dolphin yet, and we're not using that location, but you can, you can sense things around you. Which do you think would be the most superior over time? Vibration. I, I'll say the dolphin one. Tina? I think probably what would happen is for a long time you'd both compete with each other, wouldn't you? You'd both compete. And I think maybe sooner or later one of you would outcompete the other. The only difference between natural selection and what we just did, of course, is the time. We did it in <laughs> 10 minutes. Natural selection does it in. Millions and millions of years. Outstanding. Can you sit down again for me, please? I think some sweets are in order for that. Anybody else want a sweet? Of course you can. You may. See, you are so nicely. Right, we're in the lesson. We've learned a couple of key points um, about natural selection due to evolution. If I just go back to them, if I can find them, here we have. Okay, so our key points was there's competition for all things, all resources, and there's a struggle for survival. There's variation due to mutation and random breeding. The environment can change, and it's only those creatures which are best adapted to that environment which will survive. What was the question I asked you right at the start of the lesson? Can anybody remember? The question you tried to answer at the start of the lesson. Why yes, does the Lord? caterpillar taste so nasty? Why do the caterpillar taste so nasty? Okay, before you answer that question, I want you to look. Here's my friend the caterpillar. Here's my sweet bowl. Caterpillar, sweet bowl. What do you notice about the sweets? There's two different kinds. What's, what's the predominant sweet at the moment? That chocolate. The chocolate, the chocolate, the the chocolate brown, brown chocolate. thing. Yeah. Why is that the predominant sweet? Yes, because Eugene. If it tastes nasty, no one wants to eat it. That's what I said. Fantastic. And if it tastes nasty, nobody wants to eat it, what happens to it? Oh then it survives on. It survives, survives and it gets. passes on it. Yeah. Oh, it's the next generation. Now, the important thing is, did you actually consciously think about that while you were doing it? No. No, no you didn't. <laughs> Evolution is blind in its selection, okay? It is blind. It doesn't consciously decide. The caterpillar didn't consciously decide to be nasty tasting, did it? Okay? Just by random mutation or it might have eaten a plant which tasted particularly bad, and it was the selection pressure, such as the predators, who then decided for it that it's going to taste yucky, because this is the one that survived, while all the tasty caterpillars, of course, got eaten. I will leave you with a final thought. Obviously, you've got very huge brains. I've got a huge brain, too. Do you think there's any relationship, from an evolutionary point of view, between the size of your brain and your ability to do this? Okay, think about it. That's the end of the lesson. Thank you very much.